This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to talk about modulus, or the absolute value of a complex number. So in section one, we're going to talk about what absolute value, otherwise known as modulus, what it means. In section two, we'll do an example. And in section three, we'll do a second example. All right, let's get started. So our discussion is going to start when we talk about absolute value. So if we go back to some simple looking algebra, uh, absolute value came up. And we would take the absolute value of negative two, and if you know anything about absolute value, you know that that's two. If you take the absolute value of three, the absolute value of three is three. Um, let's do one more. If you take the absolute value of, let's say, negative 4, the absolute value is 4. Now the question is why? Why are these answers correct? Well, in order to understand that, let's put a number line up. So here's a number line, and let's see what happens if we talk about this point, which is negative 2. So negative 2, well, there it is on our number line. And absolute value just means how far is that number from zero. So if you were to count spaces, you'd go one space, two space. Yep, it's two spaces away. That's why your answer is two. So with three, we're over here at three. Let's see, uh, we've got one, two, three, three spaces away. So that's why the answer is three. So now we've got the value negative four. Negative 4 is 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces away from 0. That's why the answer is 4. So you could see that we're just taking the distance from 0. All right, let's clear the screen and let's start talking about what complex numbers look like. So here we have a complex plane. Uh, what does that mean? It means that we're going to graph real numbers on our x-axis, our horizontal, and we're going to graph imaginary values on our vertical axis. Now you should already know that complex numbers are written in the form a plus bi, and how do you graph them? Well, the way you graph this is you go a units to the right, and you go b units up, and you're going to get to this point. All right, so what if you were asked to then find the modulus, or otherwise known as the absolute value of this complex number? Well, the way you do it is just like you did it with the number line, trying to find the distance to the origin, or I'm sorry, you found the distance to the value zero. Um, that was the center of the number line. Well, here we're trying to find the distance from the origin. It's the same concept. So here we have the origin, here we're going to draw a segment to that complex number point we had drawn earlier. And of course we draw a segment straight down and we've got ourselves a right triangle. All right, so we know that this bottom distance is A. We know the distance right here is B. What we want to do is then calculate C. In other words, the length of the hypotenuse. Now the good news is you should already know how to find the length of a hypotenuse given a right triangle. This is just the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, in our next two examples, uh, I will demonstrate how to use the Pythagorean theorem, but if you need to brush up on that, check out this link and use that link to brush up on the Pythagorean theorem before you move forward. Okay, anyway, we're going to move on to our first example. We'll use some specific values and see how it works. All right, let's check out a problem that has specific values. We were just talking uh, what complex numbers look like in general in our last section, but let's get to the specifics. So let's say we are actually going to go six left and eight up, because that's how you do the real part, horizontal, imaginary, vertical. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I'm gonna go eight up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm right here at this point. Let's do the modulus of this number. Okay, so what does modulus mean? Again, all it means is what is the distance this point is from the origin? 
Okay, so let's see if I can do this neatly. Okay, not too neat, but good enough. So I want to find this distance. So, so to find the distance to the origin, you're going to drop a perpendicular back down to the x-axis. And we now have ourselves a right triangle. Okay, so we got a right triangle. So we should already know that our distance here was negative 6, and the distance going up was 8. Now, of course, if you are talking about distances, we should say that the distance here is 6, and this distance is 8, right? We're just talking distances now. Um, I could use negative 6 in the Pythagorean theorem, but let's just keep this in the realm of distances. So we're dealing with just positive numbers. So let's do 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to c squared. Of course, c is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So we're trying to find that distance right there. All right, so what do you do? You take 6 squared, you take 8 squared, and you add those together, you get 100. And how do you get c from c squared? You take the square root of both sides, and you get 10. And there you go. So there's our modulus. The modulus of this complex number is 10. That's all there is to it. If you know the, quad, or the uh, uh, Pythagorean theorem, it's not a big deal. So let's move on to another problem. All right, here's section 3, or our second example. So um, what we want to do, of course, is graph this point. And the way we do is we go 4 to the right, and then I'm going to go 10 down. That's going to take us right here. We're at the corner of our complex plane. And again, what do we want to do? We want to find the distance to the origin if you're being asked to calculate the modulus now. Let's say we have to calculate the modulus of this point. Okay, so uh, let's actually graph that. So I'm going to try my best here to draw a diagonal line freehand. Yeah, good enough. Okay, and of course, we got one, two, three, four. I got to go four to the. Oh. Hard to draw freehand at this program. Okay, and then go down here. That turned out great. Okay, so what did we do? We went, remember, 4 right, and I went negative 10 in that direction. That meant 10 down. So for the purposes of the Pythagorean theorem, I'm moving 10 spaces down. Yep, you could use a negative 10 if you want. In the Pythagorean theorem, you'll still get the same answer. But I'm really taking 4 squared plus 10 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Okay, so we remember that our hypotenuse we don't know, which we want to calculate, we're calling that C. All right, so let's actually do this. Well, it's 16, 100. This is 116. Okay, now we're going to take the square root. All right, some people may write it square to 16. It's not our best form. Uh, really, what 116 is, is it's 2 times 2 times 29. So I really want to take the square root of all of that. So let's take the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. There you have it. So it's 2 radical 29. So this 2 radical 29 is a better answer than the square root of 116 because it is a simplified answer. And if in the case someone asked what is the uh, decimal equivalent, you could of, of course take the square root of 116 with your calculator and it comes up to approximately uh, 10.77 Zero, 03 of course it keeps oops zero, 03 and of course it keeps going on if someone said round that to the nearest tenth we would think of chopping it or truncating our uh, value there and say well the seven tells us to round up so if someone said round it to the nearest tenth you would say all right it's approximately 10.8 all right, so if this is a standardized test, and if you're looking for a variety of answers, you could find any one of those, depending. This is probably likely not to be there. It's going to be 2 radical 29, or it's going to be 10.8.
rounded to the nearest tenth. All right, so that's what this lesson looks like. You can always check out our text lesson on complex numbers. You can check that out. Uh, make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our, all of our lessons, our interactive quizzes, and instructional videos. Take care.